Ladies and gentlemen, here is the undefeated IBF junior welterweight champion of the world, introducing Zab Super Judah. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks, originally from Serov, Russia, now fighting out of Sydney, Australia. He weighed in at the limit of 140 pounds even. His record stands at 27 wins, one loss, one draw with 22 wins coming by way of knockout. And here is the WBA and WBC super lightweight champion of the world, known as the Thunder from Down Under, introducing Kostya Zoom. All right, we're set to go. I asked Zab Judah, who is supremely confident, does he ever get nervous before fights? He said, no, Colonel. He said, I was born to fight. I'm not nervous. This is what I do. I love it. I asked Costa Zuna the same question. He said, all I want to do is control the pace of the fight. He said, remember, that's not necessarily total offensive aggression. He said, I can control the pace with defense, too. So this guy is thinking real serious about winning this fight. All right, here we go. Round number one. Costa Zuna wants to start fast, and he wants to pressure this guy. You see what I mean about him holding the hand high? Zab Judah will look for the opportunity. Notice that Zab is a southpaw. He jabbed with his right hand. Sean Bay Mitchell, by the way, was a southpaw too, and Costa Zoo had no trouble handling him. Costa said also that Sean Bay Mitchell's hand speed is just as fast as Zab Judah's. But we'll find out how he handles the speed of Zab. Zab might be a little bit quicker on his feet than Sean Bay was. Sean Bay has quick hands, but Zab has the very quick feet as well. So there's the differences there. And this fight is about stars as Zab circles to his left. Both guys a little bit cautious in the opening going. Of course, this is scheduled for 12 rounds, a tremendous amount at stake. For Costa, it vaults him not just in the world scene, but it vaults him into one of the greats of all time. And for this young Zab Judah, this is the definitive fight in his career. This is the one that tells that he can handle the best of the business. And he's wanted this fight for a long time. Wow, with that. Vicious uppercut that just whistled past the nose of Zoo, but that's the way Zoo talks about controlling with defense, just being outside the power of Zab Judah. As the uppercut, that time it got through, and has Judah back on his heels, and Zab attacks, and Costa Zoo ties him up. And so the best exchange of the fight, the punches have been landed by Zab Judah in round number one. Now Costa, as you'll see, his cheeks. I suppose it's from the part of uh, the former Soviet Union that he's from, has high cheekbones anyway, and they have a tendency to swell, but there's immediate swelling after the first couple of punches thrown by Zab Judah. Zab looked like he was tremendously powerful with those shots. He's just feeling his man out, trying to get angles. When he comes inside, he grabs on. And Jay Nady and his 47th world title bout saying, hey, keep your head up, Zab. Last thing you want in this fight is for any sort of a headbutt to ruin this fight because a lot of anticipation comes over this one. Costa looking to land the big right hand. Instead, Zab shows his quickness of his hands again. Look at these shots lined up by Zab Jr. He's after Costa. Costa able to hold him off. Touches him up with a left. Good, powerful left hand. Wild with the right hand. It's considerably noticeable the hand speed of Zab Judah in comparison to Costa. Costa, in order to hold this guy off, has got to land something powerful to get this guy back on his heels if he's going to be successful early. But so far, this is Zab Judah's round number one for two and a half minutes of it anyway. So the southpaw has been able to land the more powerful shots in this round in spite of the fact that Costa is considered the puncher. Costa Zero, of course, to the right of your screen. Zab with the, the red trim and his black trunks. And his Costa getting a shot throw. All right. Just a few seconds to go now to end round number one. And I think Zab Judah will get that on the three judges' scorecards. In the first round, in the late minutes, I start shortening this distance. Start getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Right near the end of that, that round, I got a, a buzz that Costa hurt him. And... Um, I think that my judgment was right because the second round, it was a different Zab. Right now, and you're talking about a fighter that's supremely confident anyway in, in his Zab. He has tremendous uh, impression of, of his ability. He knows the ability that he has, and he knows how to use it. 
nothing wrong when you have confidence under control. And I asked him about that, and he said, yeah, I'm learning to control my confidence. He said, uh, it's like, I mean, he's not a bad kid at all. I like his dad. He's a nice kid. Costa, of course, you know him down in Australia. A wonderful kid as well. These are two really nice guys, great athletes, and tremendous, tremendous fighters. His Costa looking a little bit awkward going after Zab. Hasn't been able to land anything heavy yet, but Zab very quick on his feet. He doesn't want to feel the power. He'd rather avoid the power of Costa. Zou. That's the old Angelo Dundee. Hit and don't get hit. The great trainer Muhammad Ali and Ray Leonard. I want my fighters not to get hit. He showed his weakness, mental weakness, uh, and he couldn't co cope with this. He couldn't handle this pressure. And he said, Okay, second round, relax. Don't relax with me. Zab thinks that he has the power to knock this guy out inside of six rounds. Costa thinks that that's not going to happen, and that's what this fight's all about. And a prohibitive favorite here in Las Vegas, minus uh, 360, meaning you're going to lay $360 on Zab Judah going 100, and it's just about the opposite down in Australia, according to Ray Wheatley. This is round two. Azu has uh, been headhunting most of the time, and you wonder if you should try and get some shots in the body, but I think what the, his fight plan is is to make this guy feel his power, and he wants him to feel it to the head. He wants to get this guy back on his heels if he possibly can. But he's on top of him, but Zab is very, very quick. A good defensive tactics by him. He'd be better off to come back at an angle than straight back, but heck, he's in the middle of the fight, and uh, you don't think about everything. He's doing just about things perfectly right now. Zhu forcing the second round a little bit more, and Zab fights when he feels like it. Look at the movement, side to side, off to his left and back to his right, skipping around, waiting for Costa to come in. Avoids the right-hand shot of Costa. Costa with his eyes till he holds that hand. He kind of uses his left hand to measure a guy and then throws his right behind it. But he hasn't been able to land the right hand. A good chopping right that time. I say good in that the, he threw the punch well, but it didn't land. Now, on the other hand, Judah really hasn't opened up at all here in the second round, and maybe the judge would give this round across the zoo because Zab may not have done enough to win this round in the eyes of the judges. That's the way I would see this round anyway. I think Costa's been busier. I think he's thrown more, and I think he's landed more. There goes Zab Judah, and he's really hurt. He's all over the place. The fight's all over. The fight has stopped. Jane Haney has stopped Costa Zoo. No place. Hit him with one shot and knocked him out. Zab Judah's not gonna like it. He was all over the place, falling all over the place. But Costa Zoo is the undisputed champion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 59 seconds in round number two. Our referee in charge, Jay Nady, stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout. He is now the unified and undisputed 140-pound champion of the world, the Thunder from down under, Kostya Is it satisfying to you to win like this? Uh, when you fight for undisputed champion of the world, you know, great opponent out in the second round, this is great result. Uh, and I believe why it's happened, because hours and hours and hours in preparation, uh, dedication, motivation, just particularly for this particular moment. I really, really believe that this is my destiny, and it is my destiny. Okay, we're going to take a look at the knockdown. You tell me what's going on here, Costa. You see the... It's first right hand come, nearly comes through, and this is right on the chin. I've seen he's become a little lazy in the beginning. I've seen uh, how he, he come in, and uh, look at him. He's uh, really, uh, look at his eyes. Look at his eyes. Uh, referee done the right decision to stop the fight. Otherwise, he will be really, really hurt. And what's, ne what's ne ne it's not necessary to do. We are humans, and this is the life uh, after boxing. And he's a young kid and still got some future for himself. What does it mean to you to be the undisputed 140-pound champion of the world? Uh, I become history in Australia, definitely. 
in Russia definitely. And uh, for a long, long time we never had the super lightweight champion of the world in this division. And I'm here again and uh, I put myself in the uh, best pan for pan boxes in the world right now because I am one of the three who has got the all three belts. The way that this fight ended, the controversy that's going to come out of this, will you give him a rematch and does he deserve a rematch? Do you remember in the press conference we asked the same questions to him? Winner take all. <laughs>